Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is an interesting case of a plava, which is a petriasis, like you notice, it very uniform is acute in a pregnant lady, which is a very rare occurrence. So this is a 23-year-old female patient who was 18 weeks pregnant. On week 14, she started to develop skin rash that became generalized with central ulceration. And as you can see, we received two pieces of skin uh, biopsies. And as you can see in one of the pieces, this is what appears to be the normal epidermis and the dermis. And this is a slightly busier area. Uh, on one edge of the biopsy and on higher power magnification, this is the almost normal part of the skin biopsy. And in contrast, this is the skin biopsy in which it's really busy with the uh, vacuolar degeneration of the basal layer. There is almost a complete obliteration of the basal layer with inflammatory infiltrate, you cannot really discern the basal layer. Now on high power magnification, again, the basal layer is almost uh, completely destroyed with the presence of inflammatory infiltrate, mostly lymphocytes, um, migrating into the epidermis and causing this vacuolar degeneration of the basal layer and the same here. Not much in the way of apoptotic bodies. There is hyperkeratosis of orthokeratin type. There isn't much really more um, uh, in terms of changes in the epidermis apart from really uh, the concentration of the changes um, along the basal layer of the epidermis. But what is really important important is that besides some lymphocytic infiltration around some of the uh, around the blood vessels especially in the superficial dermis mm -hmm. we start to see extravasation of red blood cells not only in the vicinity of the blood vessel but also into the dermis and sometimes even migrating and reaching up into the epidermis. Now, this is the second skin biopsy where you can see the focus of skin ulceration here and the perivascular lymphocytic infiltration giving this kind of wedge appearance to the, uh, to the lesion, which is an important clue to the diagnosis. On higher power magnification, you can see the focus of the skin ulceration, the uh, necrotic epidermis full thickness necrosis of the epidermis and then re-epithelization the here on higher power magnification, the re-epithelization as well as the full thickness necrosis of the epidermis. And again, very important clue, perivascular lymphocytic infiltration causing destruction to the uh, to the walls of the vessels, vasculitis. And the clue to the vasculitis is the extravasation of the red blood cells. Now, these red blood cells are not only seen around the blood vessels, but also are seen extending to the areas in the dermis as well here. For example, this is the blood vessel really obliterated almost completely with the chronic uh, inflammatory cells, the lymphocytes. Remember that the flavor and uh, like, you know, this chronicus in general are considered to be lymphocytic vasculitis. Because of that, we see uh, a perivascular lymphocytic infiltration as well as extravasation of red blood cells as an evidence to the destruction of the walls of the vessels and an evidence of the vasculitis. But what is really important, the excellent clue is that those red blood cells find them their, their way towards the epidermis. So we start to see red blood cells on the epidermis. Excellent clue to the diagnosis if we put everything together. So the final diagnosis in this patient is actually a plava, rarely reported in association with a pregnancy. But remember that things can happen regardless of the underlying association associated condition. A close to the plava diagnosis are the vacuolar degeneration of the uh, basal layer, the presence of the uh, necrosis to the epidermis, the lymphocytic infiltration, uh, uh, lymphocytic infiltration of the epidermis, the lymphocytic vasculitis. This is the underlying cause because this is considered under the large umbrella or the uh, big umbrella, wide umbrella of lymphocytic vasculitis. The clue 
due to the lymphocytic vasculitis, not only the presence of perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate, but also we have to see extra vasation of red blood cells. This is not associated with fibrin. So this is unlike lipocytoclastic vasculitis. This is not associated with fibrin deposition, and we do not need to see fibrin. What we need to see is, is the extra vasated red blood cells, some of which will find their way into the epidermis, and here lies an important clue. Sometimes we also see this rich type infiltration where we have really the base is at the epidermis and the apex is down in the dermis. Now, in this particular case, the patient was started on medications, including steroids, before initiating the biopsy. Because of that, some of the features might have been changed, yet there is enough evidence in the biopsy to render the diagnosis of a plaver. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.